please stand? Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. We brought nothing into this world, and we take nothing out. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The eternal God is our refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. With faith in Jesus Christ, we receive the body of our brother John Lebron for burial. Our brother was washed in holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore with confidence pray to God our Heavenly Father, the giver of life, that he will raise him to perfection in the company of the saints. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our brother John. We thank you for giving him to us, his family and friends, to know and love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We receive this, our brother, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated for the eulogy.
No, I'm not touching it. I don't even gonna. had a story to share with you. He loved crosswords, gadgets, Arsenal football team, having a good laugh, television. Some of his programs were Last Summer of Wine, The Simpsons, and even children's programs. He admitted to like watching Farmer Sam and reading four or five newspapers on Sunday. He enjoyed being comfortable in his own space, equally wanted his family to be also. Uncle did not see a problem with sitting in the living room and calling Monica, who would be preparing meals in the kitchen to ask her to get his spectacles. She would willingly come to his rescue and find them. I always found this hilarious. He was very proud of his successes in life and would boast about working for the Royal Mail, which he did for a number of years. My earliest memories of him was driving his Ford Princess to Birmingham to see the family for the weekend. And us, when I say us, not me, Cordell, Rue, and myself, which is beyond meeting him and Auntie Monica for a holiday in Bodmin, Devon, where we had fun playing numerous games of pool in the evening. When he became 50, he had a party at his house. He was so good to become, he was so proud to become 50. He showed off throughout the whole evening, dancing, eating, and drinking with the family and friends. Back in 1997, when my dad passed, uncle was a tremendous support system for our family, and he would travel from London to Birmingham most weekends to be with us. He returned to his beloved island, Barbados, about 10 years ago to retire. He had fun once again with family and friends. In lockdown, he enjoyed watching episodes of Greenleaf and going to walks with his friends. Rest in peace, uncle. You are one of the greatest. We stand now and sing the hymn number 427, hymn 427, through all the changing scenes of life.
in the midst of life, we are in death. From whom can we seek help but from you, O Lord, who by our sins are justly angered? Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and mortal one, have mercy upon us. Lord, you know the secrets of our hearts. Shut not your ears to our prayers, but spare us, O Lord. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and mortal one, have mercy upon us. O worthy and eternal judge, do not let the pains of death turn us away from you at our last hour. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and mortal one, have mercy upon us. Let us pray. Almighty God, we remember before you today your servant, John. And we pray that having opened to him the gates of larger life, you will receive him more and more into your joyful service, that with all who have served you in the past, he may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the first Bible reading. Good afternoon, church. A reading from the Word of God, written in the 25th chapter of the book of the prophet Isaiah. Beginning at the sixth verse, Isaiah 25, 6 to 9. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the straw that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 46, the 46th Psalm.
the second Bible reading. Good evening, church. A reading from the Word of God written in the 21st chapter of the book Revelation to St. John the Divine, beginning at the first verse, Revelation 21, 1 to 7. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth have passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe of every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first thing have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all these things. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We have a tribute in song, a Jewish by Martin and Mario Oyes.
Let's stand and sing the hymn 223. Hymn 223.
And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. A part of verse 5 of the 21st chapter of the book, the Revelation, the 21st chapter of the book of the Revelation to St. John the Divine. St. John chapter 21 and verse 5. See, I am making all things new. Words that form part of a vision that the seer John had when he was exiled on the Isle of Patmos because of his faith. We believe that while on the Isle of Patmos and reflecting on his life and what being a Christian meant for him and also for his contemporaries, he received this revelation of a vision, of a new creation, of a new existence, of a new way of moving forward in life. And this was all because of his belief in God and what God had done in his son Jesus, whom he sent into this world. Because of Jesus, and his example life showing us how we respond to life issues, how we respond to individuals, how we respond as individuals who believe that life matters, all life matters, not just black or white or the in-between shades, but all life matters. And because of this, then Jesus responding to all persons and embracing and welcoming them and sharing an idea of love, love for God and love for one another. He sought to change person's attitude, person's outlook, person's reasons for living. And so you get a number of individuals who believe in what Jesus said and what he did and started to live likewise. But you know when you start to be different and show people how things can be done differently, you always come up with those who will be averse to you, who will oppose you, there will always be conflict. And why conflict, we can say, is good, it also has its negative and bad effects on us. What's so good about conflict? Because it causes us to reflect on ourselves and what it is that we are doing and what is happening around us. It causes us to look beyond and see what can be other than what we are experiencing. It forces us to look to see how what we believe in will lead us through beyond the conflict to something new. It causes us to look at our resources, that what we have, what we can apply, employ and apply to our lives to help us through the conflicting situations which we find ourselves in. And because of this, we then start to chart a way forward. It would not be the same. We can term it a new way, another way. But this other way is based on what we believe and what we have gathered, what have instructed us, what have shaped us, what has fashioned us. The values that we live by, the principles, the standards of who we are, we therefore employ in moving beyond in whatever new situation, new life, new activity that will come about. And this vision that John, the seer, the Christian had when he reflected on his life on the Isle, on the Isle of Patmos after being exiled, cause him 
to give this message to his Christians, brothers and sisters. And hence we have the writing of this book, the Revelation to St. John the Divine. He believed he had a message to be given to the churches of his day, the seven churches in Asia Minor. This book of Revelation, known as the Apocalypse in the New Testament, is a fitting close to the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. For its final chapters depict the consummation toward which the whole biblical message of redemption is focused. It may be described as an inspired picture book by an accumula accumulation of magnificent poetic imagery which makes a powerful appeal to the reader's imagination. Have you really read the book of Revelation and see the images that were created, the message, the symbolism of those messages? Many of the details of its pictures are intended to contribute to the total impression and are not to be isolated or interpreted in a kind of literal way that what is written in the book is symbolic of the actual situation and those who were familiar with the symbols and the pictures you ever heard a picture is worth how many words a thousand words and, and this is something that we we hold on to because if it's worth a thousand words, we can look at it and we can interpret it in a thousand ways. Now, can't we? But for us, there's only one way. That's the way we say it. But if we are taken to the picture having a thousand words, then we are open to a thousand ways of looking at any one situation, aren't we? And how do we come up with those, with what we consider to be the right interpretation if there's such a thing? Or is it that it offers us an opportunity to look beyond where we are to see an alternative, something else that is there. This book of Revelation, my brothers and sisters, may have been reduced to writing before the fall of Jerusalem in the years AD 70. It is probable as some scholars believe that the author, John, would have been one of those early Christians or second generation Christian that would have experienced adverse responses to his faith. And he would have put the book in its present form toward the end of the reign of the emperor Domitian, who reigned between 81 and 96 AD. It was then that the emperor Domitian began to demand that his subjects address him as Lord and God. Now, how interesting, because the Christians we're only supposed to call one person Lord and God. And who was that? And who was that? Lord, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who they believe was God incarnate. Where we have the belief of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But here is a human ruler, an emperor, calling on his subjects, including Christians, to regard him as Lord and God and to make matters worse to worship his image I know by now your mind is going about the commandments thou shalt have no other gods but me thou shalt not have any um, images to bow down and worship them but here in human existence, an emperor calling on Christians to do such. And for their refusing to do it, 
Many of them were put to death. Many of them were threatened if they held state positions. Many of them, like John, were exiled. And having this experience of adverse treatment and response to their lives, John had to give a message to help them, not just to understand their context, but how they move beyond the context. One reason for John couching his teachings and message in mysterious figures and extraordinary metaphors was to prevent the imperial police from recognizing that this book that he was writing was a trumpet call for the persecuted, for the Christians who were broken, downspirited, distraught, assuring them that despite the worst that the Roman emperor could do, God still reigned supreme, and Christ who had died was alive forevermore. And as he was alive forevermore, he had the power to overcome all evil. As persons therefore believe in the Lord Jesus, he was going to strengthen them. He was going to empower them. He was going to enable them to overcome the adversary, to overcome the conflicts, to overcome those tribulations, those difficulties, those hurdles that they can continue to express and exercise their life as Christians, their lives with God. And so this message is one that encourages the Christians to don't let anything hinder you from being faithful, not the threats, not the exile, not the damaging words that can come from individuals, but to see in it all a God who is with you, our Lord Jesus, who will come again for us as we remain faithful to him. There will be a time when he returns to take us to that place he has gone to prepare for us. The rallying call of this book of Revelation, after encouraging the churches, the Christians, to continue serving God faithfully, to continue in their belief in the Lord Jesus Christ, even if it means death, to be faithful in all that they do, to be consistent. Don't let the evil ones or the evil situations, don't let bad experiences cause you to cower out and to give up. But as you know what we say, hold your chin up, take a deep breath, and go forward. I can share with you one brief moment in Bible study where we are looking at the Exodus. And in the Exodus, when the Israelites left Egypt and took off with Moses, and when they got to the Sea of Reeds, and the Egyptians were coming behind them, oh dear, they got afraid. When they looked back and saw the Egyptians getting closer, and they looked forward and saw this body of water, where were they to go? You know what they did? Moses, you bring us out here to kill us? Were there not enough graves in Egypt? We told you to leave us where we were. And you bring us out here. Now where are we going to go? And Moses says, stand still and see the power of God. And what happened after that? We say it's history. He stretched out his rod and they were able to move from where they were and move beyond 
to the waters of that sea. Our God is a great God. Great is his faithfulness. May we think that our backs are up against a wall and our faces are up against a wall too and we are sandwiched and we can't do anything. I don't have anywhere to go. God creates a way. We don't know how he will do it, but he will create a way. Stand still. Take a deep breath. Think again. Think of that statement that a picture is worth a thousand words. And if our word doesn't match the picture, look for the other words that can match. We are bound to find one. There's not one way to respond to life situations, but many. The Christian faith teaches us that when we believe in God, all things are possible. And this morning, the message, sorry, this evening, the message is, behold, I make all things new. And it comes to remind us that God is with us. The home of God is among mortals. And he's not here to sit down for us to tell him what to do. He's here to guide us and to remind us of his will for us, that he loved us so much that he sent Jesus into this world so that who sees the Son, who believes in the Son, will have life with him. And as we connect with him, as we embrace life with him, he will lead us through all the impossible things that we think we can't do. Just trust and believe in our Lord Jesus. Trust and believe that God has our back. Trust and believe that he's making things new. You think of the Christians back then? Think of the Christians now. Think of our lives now. What is beating in us? What has us down? Please don't say the high cost of living. That's on everybody's mouth. Right now. You know, before it used to be COVID, but we seem to be going past COVID now, right? We trying to get the hang of COVID. Now it's the high cost of living. Now it's war. Now it's crime. Now it's violence. Now it's brokenness. There's child abuse, spousal abuse, elder abuse, self abuse. Oh dear, there's so many things that we endure that knock us for sakes, that put us down. You know what? Don't be discouraged. God has our back. God still loves us. Take a deep breath. Stand up and see the power of God in your life. Jesus' prayer for his disciples when he was going away is a prayer for you as it is a prayer for me. That when I go, he says, I will ask the Father for another advocate. And when he comes, he will teach you what I have taught you. He will witness to what I have done to you. But you know what? He will also empower you and enable you to do more than I have done with you. That spirit is with us today. And he's not with us for us to tell him what to do. He's with us to remind us of God's presence and God's work in our life. The love, the healing, the comforting, the, the assistance that we need, we have it all because God is with us. And as we reach out to God in love and we reach out to each other in love, this is the new thing that God will continue to create in us. Because you see love, love causes us to do some wonderful things. Love covers the multitude of sins. Love causes us to forgive. Love causes us to put ourselves out there on behalf of others. Love causes us to find ways of dealing with the conflict in our lives. And guess what? God is love. And those who live in love, live in God, and God lives in them. This is the new thing God is asking us to do. Though we are coming out of all that's happening to us, behold, he continues to make all things new for us. What is the new thing he's doing in your life? Open your hearts, open your minds, open your life to him, and he will show you the new thing he is doing with you. For Brother John, I cannot speak of the time that he caused me to open my mind and my heart to things here. From the time he returned and he came here, he said, Trevor, and I said, who does know me now? 
And when he pointed out that he was from Rose Hill, I know my parents, <laughs> I, know my, I knew my family. Wow. From then, it was John and myself. And when he returned home or during the week for funerals, or he goes down to visit the family, he will always come back and share a word with me. I was kept in touch with what was happening in St. Philip and what was happening in St. Peter. A great man. If he didn't agree with something I said, he asked for clarification, and then he would give me his views. And he would ask, you sure you don't want to look at it from that perspective? And that's why I based my sermon this evening on looking at things differently and see the new ways you can go about. I gather that from Brother John, who challenged me from time to time, as he shared with me. And it wasn't at the point where he would go away and tell people, well, you know, Reverend, he had hard, hard. He don't like to listen to you or anything. No, that's not John. That's not John. He came to me and he spoke to me. If he disagreed, he told me what he disagreed about. Right? What the disagreement was. And we were able to talk. And I found a friend. And of course, he would say, well, you know, you're a Leado son. <laughs> <laughs> Only the person from Rose Hill will understand that. Right, Tone? But then Tone may be too young. But it was the closeness of the families in Rose Hill. Right? That he would have brought to remind me of, you know, the life that we are supposed to live. And I'm happy that he was able to, you know, keep in the church and, and live his life expressing God's presence and godliness and God's love to the point where he could reach out. So many of the members would talk about his relating to them and loving them and sharing with them his compassion, his, his sympathy, his, his love, his care. John understood the new thing that God was doing or has done and continue to do in his life. And for me, he challenged me to look beyond to the new things that God continues to do. I can stay here all afternoon and share with you some of the things that John and myself talked about. But we don't have that time. On behalf of the parish family here, at St. Philip. We know we have lost a wonderful member, a faithful member, a loving member. We've lost a one who understood the Christian life and sought to apply it to his life. And so, Sister Monica, to you and your sons, to Owen and Mark, John's sons, to your children, his grand, to his siblings in Emerson and Lewiston, Cordell, Anne and Luton, to all other relatives, we extend our sincere condolences, our prayers and support to you at this time. I pray God to touch you, each and every one of you, as you need to be touched at this time, so that you will know that God is with you. And we're assured of that touch, and that presence of God, may you be strengthened, both physically and spiritually, to continue being God's faithful servant, as John was in his life. May God continue to bless you and strengthen you as you move forward. For our brother John, he continues in this new thing that God has done for us, in creating access to God, through which we have true death. As Jesus died, and was raised to life with God, we believe now that John is given the opportunity to be raised to life with God. God bless him and strengthen him and grant him rest and peace. Rest eternal grant unto him, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon him. His soul rest in peace. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith in God in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We go to our prayers and intercessions. Please kneel. After each petition, your response is, hear us, Lord. For our brother John, let us pray to the Lord Christ who said, I am resurrection and I am life. Lord, you console Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for John and joy the tears of those who weep. Hear us. Hear us, Lord. Lord. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrows. Hear us, Lord. You raised the dead to life. Raised our brother to eternal life. Hear us. Hear us, Lord. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our brother to the joys of heaven. Hear us, Lord. Our brother was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give him fellowship with all your saints. Hear us, Lord. He was nourished with her body and blood. Grant him a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Hear us, Lord. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our brother John. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Amen. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints. Your sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. You only are immortal the creator of humankind. And we are mortal, form of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created us, saying, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave, we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven. As our brother has started his life with you, the beginning and the end. of hell. Deliver him. Let us commend our brother John to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. Deliver your servant, O sovereign Lord Christ Jesus, from all evil and set him free from every bond, that he may rest with all your saints in the eternal habitations, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, John. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, 
in the blessed rest of everlasting peace and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Rest eternal grant unto him, O Lord. May his soul and the soul of all faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Usually at this time you would have a collection for the upkeep of our cemetery. But due to the COVID-19 protocols, we avoid picking up the collection from within the sanctuary. However, at the doors as you leave, the ushers will have the offering place and you are invited to make a contribution towards the upkeep of our cemetery then. We want to thank you in advance for your contribution. If you're so moved, and ask God to continue to bless you. The hymn now, 236, hymn 236.
the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant make you perfect in every good work to do his will working in each and every one of you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ our Lord to whom be glory forever and ever Amen let us go forth in the name of Christ. Amen. Thanks be to God. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and giving life to those in the tomb. The Son of Righteousness is gloriously risen, giving light to those who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death. The Lord will guide our feet into the way of peace having taken away the sin of the world. Christ will open the kingdom of heaven to all who believe in his name, saying, Come, O blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. John, into paradise may the angels lead you. At your coming may the martyrs receive you bring you into the holy city, Jerusalem. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father, who became a tree, a poor the virgin.
I heard a voice from heaven saying, write this, happy are the dead who die in the faith of Christ. Henceforth, says the Spirit, they may rest from their labors for the, the record of it. Man born of a woman has but a short time to live. Like a flower he blossoms and then withers. Like a shadow he flees and never stays. In the midst of life we are in death. To whom can we turn for help but to you, Lord, who are justly angered by our sins? Lord God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us from the bitter pains of eternal death. You know the secrets of our hearts. In your mercy hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins. And at our last hour, let us not fall away from you. Ensure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. We commend to Almighty God our brother John, and we commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor, that when your well-beloved son shall come again in judgment, both this our brother John and we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, with whom still live the spirits of those who die in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful are in joy and felicity, we give you heartfelt thanks for the good examples of all your servants who having finished their course in faith now find rest and refreshment. May we, with all who have died in the true faith of your holy name, have perfect fulfillment and bliss in your eternal and everlasting glory. Grant, O Lord, to all who are bereaved the spirit of faith and courage 
that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not sorrowing as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. All this we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. Rest eternal grant unto him, O Lord. May the soul and the soul of all faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. The Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord make his face to shine upon him and be gracious unto him. The Lord lift up his countenance upon him and give him peace, now and for all eternity. Amen. To him, when peace like a river attendeth my way.
of our brother John. Thanking God for his life, his witness, his testimony. I pray that the example that we would have gathered and seen in him, we will live in our lives as well. Before we have our final prayer, once again on behalf of the family at St. Philip's Parish Church, we extend our sincere condolences, our prayers, to Sister Monica and your sons and other relatives, to John's siblings. We pray that God will truly be with you to comfort you at this time. And also on behalf of my family, my wife and my children, and the extended family of Rose Hill, I want to extend our prayers, sympathies, and support to you as well. Remember, O oh Lord, this your servant, who has gone before us with the sign of faith, and now rests in the sleep of peace. According to your promises, grant to him and to all who rest in peace, refreshment, light, and peace. Help us to remember, O oh God, that we indeed are called by you to work for the duties of life that you do every day. And grant us with your servant John and all the faithful departed the short benefits of our Redeemer, our Lord, your Son, our Lord Jesus, his saving passion and his glorious resurrection, that in the last day when you gather up all things in Christ, we all may be with them and enjoy the fullness of your promises. This we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ the Lord. The Lord be with you. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.
we got that. Yeah, 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 yeah